Hey everybody, welcome to Crazy Tech Lab and as hopefully some of you can recognise, this is the NZXT H1, the original tower case from NZXT and I've also just reviewed the new NZXT H1 version 2 as well, which you can see in a banner which is hopefully appearing above your screen right now. So. Why am I looking at the old case again? Well, I recently came across a bit of a problem with it and no, it's not got anything to do with the cooling or the riser cable. Well, kind of has something to do with the cooling because I have found that there is a whole bunch of you out there suffering from the same issue and it looks like it is a pump failure. So what I found the other day is that it is not the pump failure. There is something else going on inside the included all-in-one liquid cooler in this case. And a lot of you have been returning your NZX CH1s under warranty, which is fair enough, but I'm here to tell you that there is a relatively quick and easy fix because the problem is not pump failure. It is actually gook <laughs> crap that is basically accumulating in the water block section of the case, clogging it up and basically killing your thermals. It, the coolant essentially stops flowing that much around the loop and the, how I found this is basically sky high CPU thermals when I fired up the case again um, I had had it running pretty much constantly for the last six months or so acting as a server at home and uh, it's done a very good job with that but I uh, dismantled it left it for a couple of weeks and then uh, went to test it against the NZX TH1, which we can see on the right here, and yeah, CPU thermals were sky high. Now some really weird things were going on with the actual cooling. So first of all, CPU temperatures off the chart, but the fan seemed to be working, and also the pump seemed to be working as well, which I didn't expect. I could hear it engage, and also in the EFI, there were there were clear indications that the pump was actually spinning, because I could get an RPM readout for it. So Something else was clearly going on and another weird thing is that the coolant on one side of the tube was red hot and the other length of tube it was basically ambient temperature. So clearly there was a little bit of flow going through the loop but not that much. So on opening it up though, which I obviously the next step and it's fairly easy to do just by undoing some screws on the contact plate and this is what I was met with. So this is basically the reason uh, I definitely know why my NZX TH1 liquid cooler has failed, but is almost certainly the case about why your uh, liquid cooler and your NZX TH1 has failed as well. It is this crap, whatever the hell it is, wherever it's come from, accumulating in the water block, clogging those fins and killing the cooling basically. So, uh, killing the flow rate as well. So, even though there is, the pump is actually working, it cannot push the coolant around the loop and the result is that the temperatures basically skyrocket and eventually I guess the pump would probably die as well but so far having fixed it just by clearing out this crap and refilling with aftermarket coolant I seem to have fixed the problem and this is how you do it. So to start with then, clear off all the thermal paste from the underside of the cooler because otherwise this is gonna get everywhere, all over your fingers, all over your clothes and everything that you're working with. So just make sure it's all nice and clean to start with. And then you will need a uh, T6, uh, basically a star fitting to fit into the actual screws on the bottom of the contact plate. And then you've got uh, eight or so screws to remove from the contact plate and make sure that you use a just like a drain container because as soon as you get to the last couple of screws and you remove it there'll be a bit of all coolant coming out and as you can see here this is even after a flush there's still some more crap left in the contact plate which we will need to clean in a minute and just uh, take a moment to look at the way that the uh, the uh, sort of coolant director nozzle is uh, is aligned and uh, then the next step really is to clean the contact plate as we can see here there's loads and loads of stuff in there there's a couple of ways to do this you can do it with uh, an air duster as I'll do in a minute and uh, also there will be ways just using a normal um, household tap just uh, flushing through some high pressure water I wouldn't use any kind of metal brush or anything like that because the fins in the contact plate are extremely fine and you could well damage them so here I'm just going to flush 
The exterior of the contact plate section uh, with some coolant that I've made up using EK cryo fuel and some deionized water. And the next job really is to uh, just do some more flushing and uh, drain as much coolant out as we can and uh, then to fill the loop with fresh coolant basically. So this is uh, probably quite messy so you'll want to have some, uh, some towels to hand to mop up any drips and what you're looking to do is just fill the loop again with fresh coolant and uh, it's easier said than done because it does take quite a while to actually fill up with coolant but you can, hear, you can see here that the air bubbles rising up and uh, just giving the radiator a bit of a shake and uh, the tubes a bit of a shake will uh, all help to bleed the loop of air and help that coolant run down into the tubes and more importantly into the radiator so that's what we're doing here for the next minute or two So once the air bubbles stop coming up, you can go ahead and top up the coolant and then reinstall the plastic insert the correct way around, which you can confirm with the copper contact plate because that can only be inserted one way round, and you obviously want the, the opening in the insert to line up with the heat sinks on the contact plate, which is fairly obvious. So you then just want to squish everything down and also make sure you've got the drain container underneath again and uh, you can just pick your screws up out of that container or out of another container if you put them in there just reinsert them and what you want to do is tighten them diagonally so not uh, not one by one going round the contact plate you want to do this diagonally as, as much as you can so moving from one side of the contact plate to the other so here I've just installed one on one side which I'll just lightly tighten up not all the way just uh, just lightly and uh, you can see there's some uh, a bit, of, a bit of screw head sticking out the top there and then just go around and do this all over the cooler with the other screws and just uh, tighten them slightly first before going around and fully tightening them. Finally then what you want to do is just go around all the components with a kitchen towel and just make sure that any coolant is mopped up. So we can only hope that this issue has been fixed with the new version of the H1, the H1 version 2, because there is a different all-in-one liquid cooler included with that case. But it's hopefully this video, while not exonerating NZXT from this issue, is going to help a few people out there with the same problem. I have seen them on uh, various forums, including Reddit, with uh, high temperatures and what appears to be a pump failure. Hopefully, this uh, it's not actually a pump failure in those cases. It's just the contact plate that's blocked with crap. So hopefully, this helps you guys out. Uh, again, I'm not saying I'm not exonerating NZXT here. This is yet another issue with this case, but hopefully, it's a relatively easy fix for you guys to do to basically keep your NZXT H1 going for a little while longer. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will catch you soon.